If you haven't done so yet, please pause the video and try to solve the question before listening on. For part A of the question, we are asked to find the angle at which the first order maximum occurs. Now when they say first order maximum, there's actually two very important pieces of information present there. First order means that the m value, which we will explain in just a moment, is going to equal 1. And then a maximum indicates what's called constructive interference. And we know that for constructive interference, the following equation applies. D represents the distance between the slits. The angle would be what we're actually trying to find in the question. M is an integer, which again is 1 in this case. And then lambda is the wavelength of the light being used. And that's given to us as 633 nanometers. Notice that because it's given in nanometers, we're going to have to convert it into meters by multiplying by 10 to the minus 9 to convert it into the standard unit of meters. Now, what we can do since we're looking for the angle is solve this equation for theta. And to do that, we could begin by dividing both sides by d. And we can then take the inverse sine of both sides. So the angle turns out to be the inverse sine of m lambda over d. Now, d, again, is the distance between the slits. And that was given to us in a standard unit. So we don't need to convert that. We can go ahead and plug in the three known values. And when you process that and make sure your calculator is in degree mode, you should get roughly 1.06 degrees. So this would be the correct answer to part A. For part B, in order to determine the distance from the center line to this first order maximum that we discussed in part A, what we want to do is draw a picture of the scenario. And so here is a rather crude picture of what's going on here. We have the double slit indicated on the black line right here, we have the distance from the center of the double slit over to a screen of 1.38 meters. And then we have the light itself that's sort of projecting and traveling over to the screen and it's producing this first order maximum, which we've shown as a splotch of bright light right here. We just figured out that the angle from the center to that first order maximum was the 1.06 degrees. What we're trying to find essentially is this length shown in the blue line. If you look, you can see that we have a right triangle and we're basically trying to find the hypotenuse of that right triangle. And we know that the cosine of an angle in a right triangle is equal to the adjacent side divided by the hypotenuse. And again, we're trying to find that hypotenuse so we can mark it. We can actually solve this equation for the hypotenuse by inverting both sides of this fraction. So you would have 1 over cosine of theta is equal to the hypotenuse over the adjacent. And then you could multiply both sides by the adjacent side. And then all we have to do is plug in the known value for the adjacent side, which is 1.38, and then the angle, which we found earlier. And when you compute that, it should turn out to be approximately 1.38024, if you need several digits and the unit will be in meters. So that would be the correct value for the hypotenuse and thus the distance from the center line over to that first order maximum. Now on to part C, which asks for the angle at which the second order minimum occurs. Now, because the question notes that we're examining a minimum, we have to look at destructive interference. And for destructive interference, the appropriate equation to use is displayed as follows. Basically the same equation, except we have to add a half onto the m value. We're looking for the angle so we can solve for theta by dividing both sides by d and then taking the inverse sign. We can then get ready to plug in all the known values. It's a second order minimum and the question this time actually tells us that m is equal to 2 for that so we we'll plug in 2 in for m. The wavelength is still the same. Remember to convert it into meters by multiplying by 10 to the minus 9th and then d is the same as before. And when you compute that, you should get approximately 2.65 degrees for the angle to the second order minimum. So that's the correct answer to part C. Part D is going to be very similar. In fact, we can use the same picture that we used in part B of the question. The only difference is that now the angle is changed to 2.65 degrees, but we're still being asked to calculate the distance from the center line to that second order minimum. So we're basically still looking for the hypotenuse. So we can once again use the cosine function. So we'll start with the cosine of the angle equaling adjacent over hypotenuse. We'll invert both sides and then multiply both sides by adjacent. We'll plug in the adjacent side of 1.38 meters and then divide by the cosine of our angle. And we should get approximately 
148 meter, meters for the correct value to part D. Thanks for watching. If you liked the video, click the thumbs up icon and subscribe. Also, send in your own question to this email address and I'll do my best to answer it on YouTube.